Last week, we started to look at the stanza in the Chadaydi of Loisei Vaishi, Loisei Kalmi, Ma'atish Toichich Matami. And we said, what's this Indian of Loisei Vaishi? What does it mean? We said, it comes from a Pasuk in Yishayo, where Yishayo was telling Am Yisrael that when the Geula comes, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because on the one hand, obviously there's so much joy that we're finally being Nigla, we're finally being redeemed. But on the other hand, there's the possibility for there to be a certain anxiety that when things go really well, Chas Shalom, you become afraid about things not going so well again. And about the idea of like, we, we've come back to Eretz Yisrael already once. And what might this mean, Chas Shalom, if there's another Gullus, if we lose it, Chas Shalom? So there's this idea where HaKadosh Baruch Hu promises Am Yisrael through Yishayah Hanavi, don't have to worry about that. But the final Geula is the final Geula, and that's it. And there's no going back. There cannot be any going back. There's no such thing. So, we walked a little bit through the Shiva de Nechemta, you know, walking through stage by stage by stage by stage until Kala Yisrael are desperate to hear the Nechama from Hashem Himself, Kiviyachal, which sort of culminates in the final few, in the final uh, three um, haftairas of the Shiva de where HaKadosh Baruch Hu Himself is saying, Anoichi, Anoichi, Humanachemchem, and this is the promise that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us, which is the ultimate, ultimate Nechama, because even if we get the Nechama of Geula all the while that we're afraid, that Chas Shalom, it's only temporary, so then it's not a complete Nechama, because it comes along with, with, with some kind of fear, some kind of anxiety. Then I believe we, we, we were, I think we covered this part where we said that Shabbos is the same letters as Baishas. And so Shabbos contains the same element. Shabbos, a taste of the Geula, is also reflective of this Loisei Vaisha Velasi Kalmi. A person tastes something on Shabbos, you don't have to worry that it's temporary. And we started, this was the end of last week's year, we were talking a little bit about what that, what that means, that Shabbos is eternal and that the experience that we have on Shabbos is real and forever and essential in such a way that even if afterwards things start getting less uh, clear or more muddled or muddied or, or obscured, tachlis, at the end of the day, Shabbos is the real thing. Shabbos is the essence, the nekuda ha'imsai, you know, the, the middle central point. So we're up to, if you turn to page Kuftsadi Dalid, you'll see it on the, on the top right-hand side of the page. Kovtsadi Dalid. And he has over here, um, starting from the paragraph that begins, And the Tzaddik says like this, We still have to understand this more deeply. He says, no. The Geula Hasida. Right, the final Geula that the Pasuk in Yeshaya was actually talking about, I could understand. Like That's going to be an eternal thing. When it comes to Shabbos, what, what exactly are you talking about? It's an unspoken question, but now he's actually speaking it out. Shabbos comes every seven days. From the original six days and then the seventh day of creation. Even these moments that, you know, I'm standing right over there in this wonderful, beautiful shul. And we're singing Lechadaydi, Yoydea Sheba Oydi Mama, Chayzer Lamatzav Agolos Vahester Shalim Oysachal. Nobody's under the illusion that this is forever. Shabbos is a me'ain, it's a taste. It's, of course, going to be part of the answer. But, but the experience of Shabbos is incredibly transient. It's incredibly fleeting. We know that another day and Shabbos is, Shabbos is over, and then we're, we're heading right back into the week. So how does this concept of Loisei Vaishi, as it relates to the final Geula, after which there will be no more Gullus, apply in microcosm to Shabbos when we're going to have Sunday again tomorrow? And everybody knows that. Um, so much so do we know that, by the way. I'll just parenthetically tell you this very beautiful thing. That Rabbi Nachman of Breslov and Lakute Maran Tara Aleph, the Tzaddik says the strangest, most counterintuitive, very classic, strange thing. Well, the tzaddik asks that Friday night we sing Vishamru Bnei Yisrael as Shabbos. Last is the Shabbos Adar Sabr Yisalam Beinu Bnei Yisrael Isi the Adam Kishesh Yisam etc. Uve Yoyim Ashvi Shabbos Vayinafash. Say Chazal based on these words Shabbos Vayinafash. She remembers the drasha from Chazal. Shabbos Vayinafash. Kivon she Shabbos. One Shabbos is over. Vayinafash is Vay. Like, whoa, I, 
Vai, oi vei, right? Oi vei comes from this, from vai of the nefesh. Kivan sheshabas. Once Shabbos is over, so kavalt, we lost our neshama yisir. That's the drush of Chazal. Asked Rabbi Nachman a very obvious question: If this pasuk al pitrushes Chazal refers to the losing of the neshama yisir, when then should we say it? Lechayra, huh? Matzah Shabbos, say by Abdullah. Right? Before you make Avdali, you see, Shabbos va'i enough, Ash, and then you make Avdali, and Shabbos is over. It says the Rebbe the most incredible thing. He bases himself off a drasha, a remez, and a pasuk in Shira Shirim that refers to Nekudas HaKasef, sequins of silver. Nekudas HaKasef. And the Rebbe says, based on Kabbalah, the Navshachayim brings the same idea that the letters of Taira are the guf. A letter, just Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Dalet, is, a, is just a guf, it's the bechin of a body. And the neshama for the letters is the nekudas. The nekudas help the letters move. The nekudas are the bechin of neshama underneath the guf, which itself is an interesting construct. You'd assume that they would be on top. No, the neshama is underneath the nekudas that enable us to understand how this letter moves, right? How it moves. Otherwise, you just see a letter. You don't know how it's pronounced. You see a, a letter, Beis. Okay, but I need to know, is it bi, is it bi, is it be, is it ba, is it boi, is it, is it boo? Oh, you know, all the, the, and, the, and that's, the, that's, the, that's the neshama. Says the Rebbe, if nekudas are a reference to neshama, and the word kasef means silver, but it could also be a reference to ki sufin, which means longing and yearning, the Rebbe understands this pasuk in Shirashirim that makes reference to nekudas hakasef to understand that what gives a person Life, right? What, what gives a person their neshama is yearning, is idealism, is passion, if somebody doesn't mind. I'm not even sure if the electronic thing is working, so if you don't mind, I'm so sorry. It's not, I'm so sorry. This is what animates. This is what animates a person. A person who's just a letter, but he has no nekudas, he has no kisufin, nekudas hakasef. A person has no yearning. What's that? A nakuda, yeah, a nakuda taiva that enables the person to. I thought they're coming for me. That a that a person that a person has no aspect of 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 having something to strive toward, right? Which is kasef, which is kisufin. So then, so then they're missing nakudas. And mamela is just a it's just a letter on its own. It's just a guf on its own. Based on this, the Rebbe uses the understanding of the pasuk in the pasuk in um, in Tehillim. Where David Amalek says, Nichsifa Vigam Kol Sanafshi. Now, what does the Pasuk actually mean? Nichsifa Vigam Kol Sanafshi. David Amalek is saying, I longed and I yearned. My, my soul longed and yearned. And the Pasuk continues, Lechatris Hashem. For the dwelling place of a Kaddish Baruch that David spent his whole life trying to locate, trying to discover, you know, a place to lay the groundwork, so to speak, for the building of the Beis HaMikdash by Shalem HaMalek. Nichsifa Vigam Kol Sanafshi Lechatris Hashem. Says the Rebbe, leave out the last two words for a second and take a look just at the Pasuk in and of itself. We're based on this drasha in a separate place in Shir Shirim of Nekudais HaKasef, the Rebbe understands that you know what nafshi is? You know what it means to have a nefesh? Even the word nefesh actually means in certain contexts, Hayeshes Nafshechem. What does that mean? It means if you desire. Nefesh itself means desire. The Rebbe says nafshi is nichsefa v'gam kalsa. That equals nafshi. A person who's yearning, who's longing, a person who has something to live for, a person who's striving for a future goal, a person who's working on a project, a person like Rav Cook describes again and again, who hasn't lost touch with idealism, a person who still believes that we can be a part of building a bitter, a, 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 not a bitter, a bigger and a better world. Such a person has nichsef avagam kalsa nafshi. Such a person has kasef, ah, it's nekudas at kasef. Such a person has life. Based on these hakdamas, the Rebbe says, that's the deeper meaning of what's happening here. Kibin shashavas vai of the nefesh. Says the Rebbe, the most counterintuitive, incredible thing. He says, you think that when we say kibin shashavas, right, vai of the nefesh, shavas vai nefesh, that that's referring to the loss of the, of the, of the neshama yisera. Says Rabbi Nachman, what do you think gives you your neshama yisera? And again, it's a paradox. He says, what gives us our neshama Nikudas hakasef, nichsef avigam kolsa is nafshi, 
is when on Friday night we say Shabbos Vayinafash and we recognize that we're about to lose it. And we yearn for it. We don't want to lose this thing that we're told we get. Says the Rebbe, that's what gives it to you in the first place. It's a, it's a, it's a, a paradox. Believing that there's something here, it's very, very deep. Believing that there's, that there's a Metzius called a, a Neshama Yaseira, so much so that we feel agitated over the fact that Shabbos is going to pass and we're going to lose it is precisely what gives it to you in the first place. And uh, this obviously, you know, to the Litvish of mine, so to speak, is going to raise a whole bunch of questions. Oh, so the Neshama Yaseira isn't real. We don't actually get it. It's just a figment of our imagination. What if we imagined it on Tuesday? Okay, we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave the questions. These are important questions. But just let, let's just hold a, a breast of chap for a minute, you know, with the paradox and just sit with that. Um, it's very precious. So the point is that so much so, just going back to Rav Kluger's Kasha, do we know that we're going to lose Shabbos and we're going to go back to Sunday and Monday and the days of the week, that that's precisely what makes Shabbos so special. So what are you giving me tires for? That the reason that we say on me is because just like the Gula Sida will never ever ever go back into Gullahs because that's a Bukhin of Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov Lemes, right? That's the third base of Mikdash. You know, that, that, that's it. That, I mean, that's eternity that that somehow applies to Shabbos when again, the whole foundation of Shabbos is the realization that it is just transient, temporary, um, going to pass very quickly again into the days of the week. That's the Kasha that he's asking here. Again, go back inside. Mamish, those minutes that you're singing Lichadaydi, and these words, Laisi Vaishi, Yodea, Sheba Oidi Mama, Choyzela Matzav Hagalos, Vahester Shalimai Sacho. A person knows that the days of the week are, are, are fast approaching. What's the Pasuk? Paraphrasing, so what's the joy all about? What is the joy all about? This special nechama of Loisei When we get to the stanza, Loisei which we've said, right, and we're learning about, refer to the eternality of the redemptive spirit of Shabbos. She'ein achai ziyay, so the Gullus, again, it's a, it's a hint to this that we'll never go back into Gullus after the final ultimate ku'ula. V'lo yizbayesh lo'aylam, and we'll never be embarrassed in that way. V'heich yichai yehudi as nafshay, v'argashe kazu, v'chalel Shabbos. How is a person supposed to give themselves chizik and chiyas, which is why the davening is there in the first place, but it's very difficult to get chizik and chiyas from l'chadaydi when we have no idea what the words actually mean, not on a simple level and certainly not on a deeper level. So, Baruch Hashem, you know, we're, we're, we're entering into Shabbos now. There's no other way. There is no other way other than learning Torah like this. There's just no other way. And we have to expand our perceptions. So how is a Jew supposed to give himself or herself chizik on Friday nights, when we're saying this, when it's mamish there, the gullus is still there. He's heading back into it in just another couple of hours. How can we actually feel this after we've learned the depth of Lysi Call me again when a person knows that Shabbos is soon passing and we're going back into the days of the week. What's the. Yeah, so that's, a, that's a different question, but also an important question. But that's not the question he's asking here. But, that's a, but that, that is a, a very strong question also. I, I mean, I guess just a, a suggested answer to that is that, is that it, that's exactly the point. Shabbos is so powerful that the second, you know, in the, in the macrocosm, Mashiach comes, we don't need to ease into it. It's just that's it. Mashiach's here, you know. Even though Anshe Panemius understand, as we've talked about many times in this, in this context, that, um, that Mashiach's coming is a, is, a, is a mamisha process. So by the time he comes, you know, the process will, will be culminating in a certain Bechina. 
but, the, but that's, ha- that's exactly it. Shabbos is mamish geula she'in achrev galas, which makes his question tr- stronger, right? You know, what, what is this simcha? Like he says, le simcha mazu aisa. Okay, let's, let's take a look at the next uh, paragraph. Nitzchis ha-Shabbos. V'yishav advarim. He says, to understand it, we have to think about the following. Eina chanami, Shabbos is followed by Sunday. Says Rav Kluger, that's a complete misnomer. It's a complete misunderstanding of how the structure of time actually works. Mishum shah Shabbos hu beseder hu besayid ha nitzchias. He says Shabbos itself is the aspect of eternality. Kedi isa be mechilta as this fascinating and very exciting mechilta says. Rabbi Omer, kol hamishaber hamishaber Shabbos achas ketikuna or ketikna. Any person that keeps one Shabbos as it's intended to be kept, mala lavakasav the Torah will consider it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will consider it as if this person kept every single Shabbos from the first Shabbos and every single Shabbos after his lifetime until Tchiyah Just one Shabbos. Ukedikasa ba'archaim HaKadosh like it's written in the Heliga Archaim Kishi Yishmer Afilu Shabbos Achas it says, Drashan Lidaroisam Brisailam. A person who keeps Shabbos, just one Shabbos, Mala Aleim Akasav, Ki'ilu Asu Lidaroisam. Like the person kept it forever and ever and ever. Ukefize, and Kumtais from this, it comes out that Ish Yisrael Shashamar Avidu Shabbos Achaz Vames. A person who kept one Shabbos and Chas Vashon passed away. Ein Menakin Loi Mishar Ha'ilalai Im Hayashomer Lidarois Oilam. There is no lessening of the schar that he would have gotten if he would have kept every single Shabbos throughout creation. Which, of course, is a difficult idea because you get into like, like multiple infinities. You know, like, what does that mean? So, so then what is two Shabbosim? What is three Shabbos? If every Shabbos already contains every single Shabbos forever, so then... But weiter, that question is juvenile in this context. Weiter, that question is irrelevant. Because still that question is being asked by a human mind that functions within our current experience of time and space and limitation, where one thing must displace another thing, and we're not privy to the side of Nitzchias. That's what, that's what he's saying. The way that he's about to present it, we'll just say it outside and then we'll see it inside, is that there only ever is one week. That's all there ever really is. We live tachas the Gedar of Zman, we, right? We live within the realm of time. And so we consider things to be linear in such a way. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Shabbos, okay? And then you move on to the next week and that's the next week and that's the next month and that's the next year and that's the next, and, and it continues. But I'll be panemius, which is what Shabbos is, is that just like the whole of creation was literally founded on this series of seven days, and that's it. Loi pachas v'lo yoser. Loi pachas v'lo not, you know, Shabbos sheni legalius. Like it's just it. There, there's not any, nothing else. Th- and that's the bria. Says Rav Kluger in a certain bechina, and it's impossible for our minds to understand this. Every single week is a unit shalem, that is, that is is completely and entirely separate from the next unit. It has not, is no shaykhis to the next unit. From the standpoint of a person keeping one Shabbos, he's kept every single Shabbos that's, that's, that's shaykh. That's what Chazal mean when they say nachlas Yaakov, right? That, that will, a person who keeps Shabbos will, will receive nachlas Yaakov, and that's called a nachla b'li mitzar, in the Gemara says. Right? Shabbos is, is infinite. Matana toive yeshli bebeis genazai v'shabbos shema. That's what it means. That's what the beis genazai is. It comes from a hidden place that we're not really able to grasp. But somehow, each and every independent Shabbos is every single Shabbos forever in both directions. It is the only Shabbos. It is the only Shabbos. I'm reminded, I think I mentioned to some of you, that my elder, 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 elder Zayda, my great, 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 great grandfather, who our son is named after Shmuel Shmelka. He was Rabbi Shmuel Shmelka Klein, 
a patriarch of the Klein, really was a dynasty in a certain sense. Um, did not extend to me, um, <laughs> but um, it may have extended to my father, I don't know, but certainly not to me. Um, but Rav Shmalka, they called him Rav Shmalka Selish, or the Goyen of Selish, um, was, a, was a Talmud of the Chassam Seifer. Some of you may, may have actually inadvertently heard about him because there's a famous story about two Bachrim. I've, I've said this in the past, who came to Chassam Seifer, or Fahar in the Yeshiva. I think it's well known. It's printed in one of the children's books, right? The Treasury, the Art Scroll, whatever. And um, just say the story briefly, that there was only one spot in the Yeshiva. And one, they were both Goinim, you know, persons coming to Fahar, you know, Chassam Seifer's Yeshiva is not, not a small fry, but one of them was like a Mishunadik, like a, like a savant, like a, like a crazy genius, Mamish. And, um, and everyone thought, you know, this bed is going to go to this, you know, going. I love this story so much. And they both come for the fahar, only one bed left in the, in the yeshiva. And much to everybody's surprise, or else it wouldn't be a story, as, you know, everybody wouldn't know. He, the Chassam Seifer chooses the bachar that nobody thought that he would choose, based on these two bachar. And afterwards, they asked the 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 the, the Seifer, I'm saying, you know, what is Mishunadik going and, and genius? See, he said, because they came to Fahar after Sukkot, and the Sukkah was still, was still, they were taking down the Sukkah, there was some schach on the floor. And the Chassam Seifer happened to be looking out his window when these two Bachrim came, and the, the huge Taman Chacham genius just, you know, sort of walked right across the schach. Again, it could be Malam he was thinking, whatever it was, but there, there was... That's what the Chassam Seifer saw, and the other Bachar understood there's, there's a mitzvah here, and he went significantly out of the way to avoid walking on the schach. The Chassam Seifer said, that's the kind of Bachar we want in our yeshiva. Because it's not all about the ga'in ishkait. It's about a sensitivity for mitzvahs. And, and, and that Bachar who had sensitivity for mitzvahs, who was also a ga'in, as I'm also very careful to say, it's not like they, he took this, this like... Yeah. Adult, you know, it is yeshiva. No, he was a, he was a tremendous guy, so much so that I started learning his sefer Tzara Chaim, uh, which is on sugyas and shas. On the on the sugya, we're learning kedushin. I think at that time sachim, with my rebbe in the mirror, and my rebbe begged me to just pick another limud because he, he couldn't, um, because it's beyond 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 beyond. So, but that was that was the zeda. So the zeda from Shemal Kaseilasher was also very very musical, and. He was a he was a Mashunadi composer of music. So some of the chaver that have my, my new book from my heart to yours, and there's a an essay about his Bissam and Melody. It's all that's all, all story in and of itself. But but you have to buy a copy to to read it. Um, every Thursday night, Rav Shmalka would take the Bachrim of the Yeshiva, they would learn Chumash Rashi. It was a sheer Chumash Chumash Rashi that they learned Friday night, Thursday, Thursday night. And then after the Thursday night Chumash Rashi Limud, he would introduce a brand new song to be used the following night for L'Chadoidi. This is every single week. And he would say, a brand new Shabbos that's never been in the Bria needs a brand new nigan for L'Chadoidi. We, can, we can't use. And, and L'Chaira, it's this. L'Chaira, this was his, can say, but L'Chaira, you can't use last week's nigan for this week's L'Chadoidi. It's just, it's not, it's not shy. That last Shabbos, Klape, this Shabbos doesn't exist. Because creation resets, and now it's another segment. K again, Klape the week. Enechanami, the Torah also acknowledges a month and a year, you know, uh, etc., which is only possible with the accumulation of weeks. But Klape the week, and that structure that's the bedrock of all of existence, each um, set of seven is its own structure. And so the question of, oh, yeah, but, but, but then we're going to leave Shabbos and go into the, and go into the week, is not shayich. It's not, it's, it's not shayich. Because from the standpoint of a person experiencing Friday night, there is no, there's nothing else ever. This that the human experiences Sunday, it's just because time gets reset. And now, for whatever reason, a person is, a person is pushed out kibyachol, of the nitzchias of Shabbos, that's really nitzchias, and now a person, all the while that he's still in al has to go back into it, has to, uh, not back, has to go into this, this new cycle of a, of a week. All the while, that creation as a whole is not yet in the seventh millennia. So it itself is in the sheisha semiyamaisa. We're lucky we get a little bit of a microcosmic taste of that, which is Shabbos, called me'en alam haba. 
But all the while that all of creation is not yet in the El of Hashvi, we get pushed out of that because it's not yet the time. And then we have to go, we have to re-experience this thing called the six days of the week. But it's not the, you hear? It's a very dark idea. The question doesn't start from that perspective. Because Shabbos doesn't end. This that a person experiences going back to Sunday, that's a separate cheshbon. But that's not because Shabbos ends. Shabbos doesn't end. Every one Shabbos contains every single Shabbos from the beginning until the end of creation and and Nachla B'li Mitzarim forever and ever. And again, that's the point. From the standpoint of the person standing on Shabbos Friday night singing, Lo Yisivay Shavu Lo Me, it's not even a Havamina for that person to start thinking about, I but Shabbos is going to leave. Because not from the standpoint of Shabbos, you hear? Only within the six days of the week does a person recognize this. And so it's a kasha on Thursday night when you're sitting around not on Shabbos. But this is not a kasha on Shabbos. Because on Shabbos there is no Sunday. There is no Sunday. The only Sunday that exists on Shabbos is the Sunday Shavar. Not the Sunday that will be. And I'll be moide bepemali, I do not fully understand what the words that are coming out of my mouth. Nor do you. Nor can I. Nor can you. Nor can we. Because it's an Indian that's lamalam mitam vadas. I'm just I'm just explaining, hopefully faithfully, what I've what I've learned in other svarim and what what he's explaining over here. Let, let's read a little bit more inside before we we jump on it. Let, let's see a little bit more. Umavur, sha'am nam hashabbos choy lefes v'nechnasim shuvli moisachal. Obviously, Shabbos passes. Person goes into the days of the week. But he says unequivocally, "Ein bekach mashmau shel guula v'shuv chazeres legalas." This is not the module and the model, the framework of a person going from from guula and then back into galas. That's not what's happening. Kikidu shasa shabbos shavra, because when a person experiences a shabbos, he ira benefesh ayehudi kidyan shal yichud nitzchi. There's something in that that's forever and ever and ever and ever that you never leave. He's saying here maybe a slightly different pechina. Where hayoyis that a person leaves Shabbos and goes into the week. Shabbos doesn't leave you. Shabbos doesn't leave you. You know, the same famous thing. You could take a Jew out of Egypt. You can take Egypt out of the Jew. Say the same thing about Shabbos on the side of Kedusha. You can take a Jew out of Shabbos. You can't take that Shabbos out of the Yid. That, that Shabbos is in the Yid forever and ever and ever. Yichud nitzchi v'yemoy sachol shol ha'achareha heim inyan acher legamri v'yemoy sachol shekadam lehem. Those, the subsequent segment of six new days has nothing to do with the six days that came before it. Or the seven rather days that came before it. Al-kach o'imrim, and that's why we say lo'isi v'yishu v'yishu kalni. Adaraba, we're reinforcing, listen, on one hand, he's asking, this is very, very important. I'm sorry, we're belaboring this point, but it's deep and it's, and it's, and it's important. We thought that Rav Kluger taught us this very beautiful parish of Loisi Vaishi Vaishi Call Me. Based on that, there's a glaring kasha because you're telling me Loisi Vaishi is a hint of what we're going to experience with the ultimate Gu'ula, where the Pasagi and Shayo was referring to, that Loisi Vaishi Vaishi Call Me is the ultimate Nechama and the ultimate consolation because don't worry that you go into Gu'ula, you'll never again go into Gullahs. Based on this, we have a Bamba kasha, you have a bomb kasha that I don't understand. But, but Shabbos ends. And we do go back into the six days of the week. Says Rav Kluger, wow, we missed the boat. That is precisely what Laisi Vaishu Vlaisi called me is coming to remind me. That that is not true. You have, it's not a kasha on that, and then we have to come up with a teretz. That is the teretz. That is the teretz. That is why we say, Laisi Vaishi, Vaisi, call me on Friday night. Because if you were to think that you're ever going into Sunday, you have a reminder already Friday night that you're in Shabbos forever and ever and ever and ever. That is the Nechama. It's not a kasha on the Nechama. That is what the Nechama is. Ba'aymek, ba'aymek, ba'aymek. You hear, do you hear this? You hear the difference? It's like double. Laisi Vaishi, Vaisi, call me. Just in case you have another question. Yeah, oh, exactly. Loisi by show. like, where? No, no, no. Loisi call me. You know. So again, again. Al kach oimrim. Loisi by show. Loisi call me. That is precisely the chizuk and the and the nechama that's being delivered. Ugamay Shapir Shara Dak, and like the Radak says, She ein ha aliyah hazu shol Shabbos kadavers mani hacholef v'holech. 
the Aliyah that a person has on Shabbos, that the Olamos have on Shabbos, it's called in the Zara, the Yom Aliyah Sa'olamos, or all the Olamos have, have an Aliyah. It, it's not like something that you know, goes up, but it's transient and passing and temporary. The Radak says, No. Klape Shabbos itself, understanding that on Shabbos you're channeling the Yom Shekule Shabbos. That is what Shabbos is. It's a Me'ein Olam Haba. You have to understand, Me'ein Olam Haba, not in the sense that it's a limited snippet of, of, of something much, 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 much bigger. It's that it is quantitatively small in the sense that we're not quite there yet, but qualitatively it contains the whole Nitzchias. The me'ain of Olam Haba that, is, that Shabbos has, Taka gives us not a little, little shallow taste of that. Again, it all depends on, on, our, on our consciousness, but a person that recognizes this and sings the Chadoidi the way the Chadoidi is meant to be sung, it's meant to say something to us, it's meant to remind us of something. So we have to have learned the thing first in order for the, for, the, for, the, for the liturgy to remind us of the things it's supposed to be reminding us. That's what davening is, it's all reminders. If we didn't learn it the first time, so then it doesn't remind us of Klum. It reminds us of, of uh, you know, the coffee that's waiting for us as soon as we can rush out of Austria Valencia, and it's not reminding us of anything. So we have to learn this stuff first, and then davening, gewalt. davening comes to remind us. Shkai, thank you so much for coming. Right? And so, and so what's it coming to remind us? It's coming to remind us Friday night that the me'ain oilam haba that we're tasting is the whole entire oilam haba that we're tasting. All the while that a person still is in the consciousness of thinking that, oh, it's Shabbos now, but it's going to be Sunday next week, which is probably why it's so terrible to speak. You know, we have an initial Shabbos gret. Not because it's, it's like, it's not, it's not shabbos to talk about it. It's because all the while that a person is talking about their plans for after Shabbos, that means b'chalal they're not in Shabbos. Do you, you hear the oymic of that? Because it's Shabbos. It's because it's Shabbos. It's not, it has nothing to do with appropriate. It has to do with this is the nature of Shabbos, the mitzvahs of Shabbos, and that there is no Sunday. I, we all know there's going to be a Sunday. in It's nothing to do. That's something else. Time will reset. It will start again. But from the standpoint of Shabbos, Raza de Shabbos, Ihi Shabbos. It's just Shabbos. That's the secret of Shabbos. Is that Shabbos is Shema de Kuchibrihu. It's the name, says the Zar Kaddish, it's the name of Hashem. Haya Haive Fiyya. It's Shabbos. Hmm? Oh. Again? The word Yihia. Yeah. No, I- yeah. yeah. Oh, Ihi. Oh, Ihi. 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 Gewalt. Wow. That, that itself is the name. Beautiful. Beautiful. See, here we're saying, wow. It's a, it's a, it's a big... It sounds like we're just learning one stanza on the Chadoidi. But we're not. I mean, this might be actually, I think, we've learned a lot as a Chabura. I think it was like 47th year or something. Um, not going to make mention of any subsequent presidents or anything like that. But... Um, yeah, they're up to 47, I think. That's the next one, 46. Anyway, but, but the point is, I think that this might be one of the most pa- maybe powerful or essential ideas that we've learned maybe in the whole series uh, as, it comes, as it relates to Shabbos. Because you could learn everything else about Shabbos and miss this Nikuda and Chas Vashalom a person missed the whole Shabbos. This is a fundamental Nikuda that now we have the privilege of being reminded of, if we take it seriously, every single Friday night during L'chadaydi, in these words, call me. That's very powerful. I, and I'm, I'm personally grateful to Rav Kluger for, for, uh, for introducing this idea to myself and, and you know, to all of us. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a quasi, a quasi mitzvah. I said I, I've, I don't even begin to understand it. It's almost like a like a pshara between between one between 
our way of seeing time mm -hmm. as Rav's way of seeing time. Yeah, it's it, like it a, would seem so. Yeah, it's it's something it's something in between. It's something in between. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. The whole theme of Pasim Kala, I mean, it's it's very appropriate. It's talking about the idea of knowing how to meet in the middle. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a it's a bechina of meeting, and that and that itself is the aspect of Shalosh Shudas Rava de Rabin, which is the meeting point between Friday night and Shabbos day. The bechina of. Uh, sorry, sorry to interject, but coming off of another chabura that you you provide. We were just learning about Shuvu Eli, Shuvu Eli, by Shuvu Aleichem. Yeah. A compromising of Shuvus. Ah, Shuvu of Shuvu, of, of Shuvu, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I think all this is strong. It turns, it turns not to Shabbos into something very cruel. This. Cruel? Yeah, what do you mean? Chucked out of something. Yeah. We certainly are, and that's why we smell basamin, because we need we need strength. Right? Otherwise, otherwise, what are we what are we doing on by Avdala? The whole Avdala <laughs> is is to bring us back to life because we, it's mamish bechina of misa. It is a bechina of misa, and the whole the whole thing of Avdala is to is to wake up our senses again. We wake up our eyes with the flame. We wake up our, our smell, you know, with the basamin. We wake up our taste with the grape juice. It, it's it's like mamish the tzaddikim the way that they, they describe how they would feel, you know, in Shabbos leaves. Like, they felt it. They really felt it. They really felt it. But again, not because they lost Shabbos. That's the key point that Rav is making. They did not lose Shabbos. What they had in Shabbos, they always had, they always will have, forever and ever and ever. You know, that, that, they, that doesn't go away. Ah, we saved you your seat right in front. Thank you so much for coming. That doesn't go away. But what they did feel is, Gewalt, we got to do this, we got to do this again. Until the day that then they will have the sum total, Kibiyachal, of all these infinities, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and Mamish experience eternality forever and ever and ever. But it's a different thing than saying, oh, you know, now, it's a, you hear? It's, it's, a, it's a different thing. Huh? It's almost like they have their reality broke almost. Yeah. Yeah. They may as well know it intellectually. But it's almost like the reality of like, wow, this is it, we're here. Snap breaks. That was always that, that was there. It it is, but I would I, I would just caution a conception of it that would be too similar to what he's saying. Loise Vaishi comes to tell me it isn't. Because again, Loise Vaishi is telling me you do not go into Gu'ula and then come back into Gullas. That's not what's happening here. And so what we're trying to construct is a conception where Hayois that Shabbos goes into Sunday, and, and we know that that's going to happen, that's outside of the Geder of, of being Nigal and then going back into Gullus. He's, he's trying to explain that is not what's happening here. Meaning there's a part of you that is perpetually, eternally in Shabbos. And more, more than that, from the standpoint, and that's the key, of Shabbos itself, in as much as Shabbos is a me'ain olam haba, again, I, I want to, the me'ain is only because we live in a reality where that experience of olam haba, which is it's essentially nitzchias, is going to not be experienced as nitzchias. So it's only a me'ain. So I would say that's the quantitative kivyachal element of the gu'ula. But the qualitative element of the gu'ula, while the gu'ula is being experienced, is forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. In fact, it's so forever that even the word forever is irrelevant because forever implies time. And on Shabbos, it's bechalal l'mal On Shabbos, it's bechalal l'mal Yeah. 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 Halavai, we should all be on this madriga. Yeah, we we just learned this idea 10 minutes ago and already. <laughs> yeah, I need it though. I need it. Because even if I'm just coming into Shabbos, if the Shabbos that I'm coming into is still seen through chal eyes, 
So then there's a part of me that, that, know, that sees even the coming into Shabbos as one chalik of the coming out, meaning as part one of a two-part story with a, with a sequence that I'm coming in to go out. And so I, I think there's something so gorgeous about you, you come right, like you're saying, mamish at the beginning of Shabbos, and the first thing is this master class in reminding us to be present. To be present in such a deep way that mamish, and this is what emuna means, we believe that there is no tomorrow. Like, like, you know this expression, like there's no tomorrow? I, enjoy Shabbos like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. That, that's what it's supposed to be. That means you get bumper stickers. Yes, I got it. We, we had a few bumper stickers from this year. Um, <laughs> you, could take, you could take a yid out of Shabbos. You can't take Shabbos out of the yid. And, and enjoy Shabbos like there's no tomorrow. Because there's no tomorrow. Like there's no because there's no, right, like there's no Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I would argue that all the while that a person is living in the present, then in that moment they're, they're experiencing Shabbos. I would say, I, I, would, I would say that, that, that that's exactly what, that's what we were speaking also, a couple of the Hebrew, we were speaking about mindfulness, right? That taking some time out of your day to actually sit and be present is a Bechina of Shabbos. This is an island of Shabbos. That's what, that's what we said. Shabbos is the Oisir Sheves. It means to sit. Just to sit, right? Not, not, to, not to be running all the time. To sit. The, and Shabbos is 24 hours of that. The difference is, and there are many differences, right? Because it, it's, it's, you know, a person can't not just get to the Madriga of Shabbos during the week. It's, a, it's an aspect of Shabbos in a certain sense. But Shabbos is so much more than that. Because every aspect of Shabbos, like we've been learning now for the last almost, you know, whatever, two years, a year and a half, whatever, we, we've been learning that Shabbos is saturated with, with, with bracha and kedusha. You know, there, there are so many different elements, layers of what Shabbos is. The emuna of Shabbos, malchus, reflecting the ratzon of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. You know, the, it, it's, saturated. It's, it's so much deeper. That, so it's not just you're being present and it just so happens to be Shabbos. It's toich kedei. It's, it's mamish, mamish, being fully immersed in a rich world of emuna. That, that's, what, that's, that's how I conceive of it, which is different than being present during the week, because you'll be present, you'll be present in the chal. And Shabbos, it's being present in, in the nitzchias of the re- revelation of the presence of Hashem, at least ideally. That's how it should be. Okay, let's see a little bit weiter. Shekane, yeah, I think we turned over the page, we're on page Kuf Tzadi Hey. Shekane. Therefore, even when a person leaves Shabbos, Nishar Rishimu Benefesh Me'ara Geula Shazaychen Lab Shabbos Kodesh. So the person will always take a little bit of Shabbos Kodesh with them into the week. Kibes Shabbos Kodesh Niskenes Vinishlemes Ha'avoda Shal Sheishu Shemei Amaisa Shahayu Lefaneha. Each Shabbos, Klape the six days of the week before it is a complete is a completion, is a gemar, is the end. It's full and complete and done. V'achar kach, like we've been saying, maschol bira chada, shol sheish zemei ha-maisev ha Now it's a completely new segment of time called the next week. But from the standpoint again of Shabbos, everything is done. Ki ilu kal melech t'cha That's what it means. That in a certain way, b'bechina mesu yemet, all the malacha of that six days of the week is taka done, it, right? It's mamish done. Nachshav ki ilu asuya. Goyla vigeula alaf halufa shalena. We'll have an eye to understand this a little bit more deeply. Shehein hein advarim asher yizgalu la asir vigeula asida. This is incredibly deep. He says this is taka, a taste of what the ultimate geula will be. Because again, Shabbos is only a me'ain of what the elef hashvi'i is in the macro, in the macrocosm. Shegein Ikers Galas Hagaula. He says, "You know what it means that the Geula is going to be rede- revealed, that the light of redemption will be activated." Shehaaras Hagaula Loitis Salikas Hagalos. This is a big thing by the Hasidim. Big thing you find in the Sfar Magdash. It's a very deep idea. Light does not come to do away with the Mitzias of darkness. Geula doesn't come to do away with Galus. 
As I know, a person, a person pays back a loan that like he, he wished he would never have been in a matzah where he had to take a loan and now he has to pay it back. And so, okay, he took a loan and now he paid it and Shalom I saw and you carry on. It, it's not, it's not the completion of what was just arbitrarily broken. The whole Indian of the Elif HaShvi'i, which again, we can experience each on their madriga and how much they're aware and how much they learn about this stuff. Each person can experience every Shabbos anew. Is a dia ubihiris belikus? Is a clarity and a, and a knowledge and an awareness of elikus of godliness. Kenoida, as it's known, I think Reb Zalmi brought this up. One of the recent shiurim. Kenoida, kenoida shesoid hachiluk bein goyle legula. Right, that the difference between galus and gula who ba aleph. It's just that goyle, which means exile, is missing the aleph, which is a reference to Hashem, who's one, and that's the letter Aleph. And Gula is the same, it is not a different word. And that's the, that's the oymik of this, that's just a nice word play. The word for redemption is not a chves, you know, uh, I don't know, so, you know, uga, um, which itself is pretty similar. <laughs> you know, it's a, a nice big cake. I don't know, it's something else. It's not glida. It's not some random Hebrew word. It's the very word of Gullus. But now, it's illuminated with the light of the Alufa Shal Oilam. Meaning the Metzias that was gullus oriented stays the same, but now there's a light that reveals, that fills in all the cracks to reveal that, ah, there was a different Metzias here than the one that I experienced. Not that the world is just sh taken away and then we get a brand new world. It's the same world with all of its brokenness. But now there's a light that's able to forge a connection between all of the cracks in such a way that it mamela becomes a new metzius, but it's something new that's made out of the pieces of the something old. That's the light of the Aleph, which is the unifying energy that manifests itself toich the goyla, within the exile, and that becomes good. Right? And it's basically saying it's exactly the same. But it shows Malchias. Yes, absolutely. I like to say, you know, the Gemara that the Ramam is, is based on ha, has this Ein Bain, Ein Bain, right? All the Ein Bain, the Ein Bain, it's Gemara Megillah. Ein Bain, you might say, you might and, and a lot of people who go with that shita are very perturbed by this shita. It's like, really? You, you couldn't think up anything better than Yemaisa Mashiach other than um, with just the arbitrary removal of Shibit Galias the Bilvad? And the answer to that question is, 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 of course, simply that Adarabah, we taka can't think of anything better than what we currently have, minus a couple of tweaks that need to be made. But essentially, all the pieces of the messianic puzzle are here. They came in the box. We're just having an extraordinarily difficult time putting this thing together. So I, I think it's the, most, it's the most optimistic messianic revelation because it encourages us to realize the latent potential of what we already have as humans. In our Matthias, not like the Islamic conception of you know, the complete destruction of this reality and then, boom, you know, something else. <coughs> that was never the Jewish conception. It's going to be here. It's going to be, it's going to be, the, it's like, it's reminding me of Rabbi Nachman when he finally arrived in Eretz Yisrael after six months of a very, very, turbulent artist journey the Rebbe, the Rebbe finally comes to Eretz Yisrael and he was walking with his with his with his chevra through the hills and he was speaking about the godless of a kedusha Eretz Yisrael and the Rebbe the, and, and, and the Rebbe pointed with his finger there's a Messiah a little bit that he was pointing at Yavniel which is why the wrestlers went and made a, and made a yeshuv there but I don't know where they got that from but, or, or even where I heard that but I think that's the Shmua that they somehow know based on where he was that he was pointing there but he pointed at a mountain. He pointed at a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a mountain or a plain. He pointed at some topography in Eretz Yisrael. And he said, I want you to realize, I'm talking about this. I'm not, I'm talking about the, I think he said, this land with these houses. Meaning he's, he's speaking about, oh, you know, what, 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 what Eretz Yisrael is and what the Kedusha's Eretz Yisrael is and, and what a person could be Zoycha to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He said, I want to let you know I'm not speaking the Himmel. I'm, spe I'm speaking about this, this land, this land, this soil. 
These houses, there's a place in the Kutumran, Rabbi Nachman said, he said a lot of people are mis- have a misconception about Eretz Yisrael that they're going to get there and it's going to be some other, it's going to be some new kind of Mitzvah. Like they thought about America, you know, the, the streets are paved with silver and jewels and everything. They, they, they think, you know, the gold in a Medina they thought was like actually gold, you know. And said so the Rebbe, he said, it's a terrible mistake. He said, no, it's, Eretz Yisrael looks the, so it's the same as any other land. I've been there, said the Rebbe. He says, I'm telling you, to most of the people, they didn't have pictures or anything like us. We know what Eretz Yisrael is. Imagine if you had never seen a picture of Eretz Yisrael and all you knew about Eretz Yisrael was, th- was from Sukkim and, and, and the Svarim, is, particularly the Svarim of Kabbalah Hasid. You would think that this place is like some magical uh, uh, sphere of, of, you know, unicorns and rainbows and sparkles and all kinds of different magical things. No, really. <laughs> because the way that Tzadikim speak about this land... You, and the Rebbe wasn't trying to dampen people's excitement. The Rebbe was trying to explain to people that every exalted vision you read about in the Sfarim is here. It is here. Mashiach comes here. The light of the Gu'ula is revealed here. And it's a shift in consciousness that then activates the human potential. The human potential. And from that perspective, it, Adarab, I think it's the, most, it's the most inspiring vision of Gula that's possible. Why? Because be, more than being a vision of the Gula, it's a vision of, of today. It's a vision of just how close we are to doing our part to let the light of the Echad, Yachad, and Miyuchad into the Gula, and the Mela of the Gula will be revealed. And that's a completely different way of, of looking at things. That the Baal Shem Tov reveals. Let's go, let's go back inside. There will be nothing left, no stone overturned, nothing that does not have its rectification. Ki you are Alufa Shalayla, because that Aleph, the, the master of the world, the chief of the world, will be revealed called Prat Menagolis. Every single detail of the exile will be illuminated from a standpoint that we cannot currently understand. Looking back in retrospect, you see the, 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 the cosmic narrative. Because the whole thing of exile means that a Kodesh Baruch is hidden and that leads to, 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 to all kinds of destruction on a cultural level, on a societal level, on a natural level. The world itself is impacted. And... Whether it's practically, like we're actually eroding the ozone layer, if that happens to be a person's belief, uh, or, or, or metaphysically, you know, where nature, as we learn by the Mabel, is impacted by, by, by human morals or lack thereof. And, and, and one who has a tendency to believe the, uh, you know, the, that humans are the ones that are causing what's clearly a thing that's happening with extreme weather you know, and, and global warming with, with all the different perspectives on that, th- that's a very nice corollary to what Chazal say because, it's, because th- that's a very practical way in which a, a purely capitalistic, ego-driven society is actually destroying the earth. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not stand that on some spiritual level there's an impact. Like, there's an actual practical physical impact. If people do not care for anything other than their own personal gain, then they're going to destroy the world for, for all of us. Says Rabbi Nachman, so all you need is just a shift, a shift out of, uh, out of ego, a shift into, into, into mission orientation, a shift into thinking bigger so the individual isn't self-obsessed but starts to think about others. Starts to think about others. We build a society that's focused on others. Others. So when that light of the Alufa Shalom shines in the world, so then that's Gula. Shekena Golos back inside. The Golos is that Hashem's light is hidden. And so everything's falling apart. Literally. But you know, part is Milosh and Prat. That's where the word part comes from. It's Prat. Really, part is a Prat. It's just one detail. Everything falls apart, meaning falls into parts, as opposed to being the cloud, because the only cloud that's big enough and deep enough and expansive enough to bring together all the pratim is the singular creator who created and sustains all the pratim. There's just no idea that's big enough to unite mamish every strata of existence other than the human consciousness opening up to revealing the light of the echad yachid umiyuchad. When that light of ashkacha will be revealed through an expanded experience of consciousness, which is the pressing call of the hour for our generation. A person will begin to understand and not just believe, but will see, will roya, will perceive 
in a way that we cannot currently imagine, even with our amuna, a person will actually come to understand how Hashem and His master plan that is fundamentally good was itself coded into the Ra, umemela batla astara, and memela betela batla astara, the concealment is necessarily undone. Because it turns out that the concealment that we thought was concealment was actually a great revelation of godliness. Just from our perspective, we were incapable of seeing it. That's Geula. That's Geula. Says we've spoken about this elsewhere. Let's just finish this segment. That's how it is with Gula Saklal is via Samashiach. But again, that's how it is with each and every one of us, the microcosmic man. This is what it means the redemption of each Prat, of each individual on every Arab Shabbos. Because the primary consolation that's revealed on every Kabbalah Shabbos, who mikach she'ein Hashem is baruch miniach umbavater al shum puula shal Yisrael hashen nasi b'moisachal, where it turns out that not any detail of my week, you know, the good times and the da- bad times and the up times and the down times, and and whatever it is that we experience throughout the very tumultuous journey of a six day period of time, which seems like a very short time, but isn't experienced as a short time. It's a long time, especially if, if a person journals, which is highly encouraged, and a person is able to look back. You know, because if I ask you what you did on Monday, you know, tell me about your day on Monday. It, it takes a bit of thinking, but if you write it down every night and then you go back over the week and you look. A week is full of different stuff. You know, life is frenetic today. Life is very busy. A lot, a lot going on. And the light of Shabbos enables a person, through rediscovering radical emuna, to be able to realize that from the standpoint of Shabbos, everything that happened this week happened exactly as it needed to happen for this week. Which, like we learned at the beginning of this year, the first part, is a full segment of time, and there's nothing else. That was my tikkun during this week. Everything that we went through, every single thing, in our choices, outside our choices, circumstantially, good things, bad things, etc., etc. No. The R of Hashem is Barach. Hashem is Barach Miniach al Shum Pu'ula Shal Yisrael Asher Nasi B'Maisachal. Hashem doesn't let go of any of it. Who takes everything that a person went through, even the downfalls, even the mistakes, even the things that we're not quite sure about, and that our heart of hearts, which is very honest, no matter what kind of lifestyle we happen to choose, our, our, our heart knows what's right. It just does. It just does. A Jewish heart knows what's right. And it comes Friday night. And we feel we feel that a Kodesh Baruch Hu takes all of what we went through that week and it is what enables the Jew to feel, I need to do something else. I, I need to, I, need to ret- I don't want to live this way. I, I want to fix. I want to be bigger. I want to be a Shabbos to Kiyid. Dahainu. From the standpoint of eternal fixing, from the standpoint of Gu'ula, we look back over the six days of the week and we understand everything has its, everything has its place. Through the cause of Arachayim, like the Arachayim, HaKadosh Rai, Shafilu, Amrak, Yaskim, Lushm, or Shabbos, Achaz. Even again, if a person, Yaskimu, not that he keeps one Shabbos, if a person's maskim, a person, you finally get a person to genuinely say, you know what, I actually am interested in keeping one Shabbos, Kvar Mala, Lehem, HaKas, Kilo, Asa, that's it, it's already considered like the person kept every Shabbos there is. We're not speaking about on the Shabbos the person kept. Stop. Person during the week wants to be a Shabbos Yid, wants to be connected to Shabbos. Not like keeping Shabbos. A person wants to be Shaykh to this thing called Shabbos in all of its depth and breadth. So the message is, Shikasha Yachsri Yisrael Bechuva. That when all of us will return in tshuva, which of course is what Shabbos is, Shabbos is the Lashon of tshuva, v'shavta ad Hashem alikecha, is a Pasuk, you should return to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and the words v'shavta spell really the same letters as v'shabbos ad Hashem alikecha. Shabbos is tshuva. Olam haba is tshuva, is bina. Kisei HaKavah, that, that, that's what G'doy L'Tshuva Shemagas, ad Kisei HaKavah, that's what Shabbos is, is a, is a taste of tshuva. So that's tshuva me'ahava, yalu 
All of our good ritzaynas, even the things that we were not able to, to actualize, but the things that we really wanted, all the while that they're sincere. That's the key point. It's got to be sincere. Can't fool the system. Real ritzaynas. And a person's limited. Every single person deals with what they deal with. Every person has baggage and struggles and difficulties and everyone's trying their best. But to be a real, authentic mavakish Hashem, a person that's genuinely striving, that's trying. You come into Shabbos, you look back over the week from the standpoint of the R of Geula, the R of fixing, the R of eternality, the, 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 you know, that, that light of recognizing this six weeks was a, was a, was a davar shalim. Now that, that's a full story. That's a full narrative of this week alone Shabbos gives me the realization, to, the, 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 the ability to experience through the, through the redemptive light of Emunah, the fixing of, of the whole week. And, and again, just to, to, to stress, from that standpoint, on Shabbos Kodesh, you're already there. What's a person worried about the next Sunday for? It's, it's Bechlal, it's Bechlal, it's Enoi Ben Nimsa. In the place of Shabbos, where the person is in spirituality and in consciousness on Shabbos, there is no Sunday. It just does, in that place, Sunday doesn't exist forever and ever and ever and ever and ever.